Hi guys, it is always so great to visit with one of the members of the Dynasty 90s years. Today is Jeff Nelson. He's also a member of our Yes Network family. Jeff, happy to see you. How's the family? Oh, they're great. We're staying healthy and uh, you know, luckily we're living in Florida and the weather's really nice. We're able to get outside. The golf courses that we're playing on aren't closed yet. We're not going on wood. We just got off the course actually my wife and I just a few minutes ago. We got even, by the way. I needed one more hole to get even. I needed 10 holes. Usually we do the nine hole match and I was actually losing, which wasn't going to be a fun interview if that would have happened. <laughs> Something to shoot for tomorrow, though, for each of you. <laughs> yeah. Always great to see you. Okay, let's into the, uh, the news of the day, and it was pretty big news. And now several outlets are reporting that Major League Baseball is considering starting the season is May. As we've heard, they're going to sequester everyone involved in a biosphere, so to speak, in Arizona and play all the games there. What were your initial thoughts? Well, I, I want baseball back. I think everybody does. I mean, I, you know, I'm sitting, uh, luckily, like I said, we're in Florida, but you want baseball back. And anything they can do to make a legitimate season, I think at, at least 100 games or more to make a legitimate champion at the end, and hopefully that is the Yankees in 2020, however or how far they go into the wintertime is fine with me. I mean, I don't care if the Yankees are in it, go till Thanksgiving or even Christmas, whatever. But I've had spring training in Arizona for a number of years when I was in Seattle. I, most of my career, uh, even in the minor leagues, has been in Seattle. And with all the new ballparks, and I think the main thing, they want to eliminate the travel. And the travel around there, in Florida, you have to take buses a long way. I mean, there's some big bus trips here in the state of Florida. In Arizona, everything is within 30 minutes to 40 minutes away. And, and they have a lot of nice ballparks out there. You have the Dodgers, you have can, um, do a talking stick out there that the Rockies and I forget who else they share that with them, the Dodgers and Goodyear. So there's a lot, even with the Mariners uh, in Peoria, they share it with the Padres. So I think it's great to have that central location if baseball comes back. I know fans in the different cities probably don't like it so well, but to be able to get this back and maybe in July and August, they'll go to their regular cities and you'll see fans back. Well, obviously, there are still some hurdles to get over with regard to this plan, but it sounds like you think it's a good one. Yeah, I think so. You know, the toughest part of it is, is that, okay, if they do, they'll have the two weeks, I think, before they start the season, and I imagine they won't start to see, I mean, they won't have fans in the stands when they do start the games, and that's going to be the toughest part. Uh, you know, playing, you know, in spring training, going to the minor league fields, it's so much, it's so players feed off of the fans. You know, when you have your home fans cheering for you, uh, even when you're a Yankee and you go to opposing stadiums and you have the fans booing you, you kind of feed off of that in a way as well. To go to a stadium and all of a sudden you hear nothing, that's going to be the toughest thing, I think, for the players to overcome. I've heard a couple guys say the biggest thing they can maybe compare it to is spring training games. Is that valid? Right. Yeah, in a way, I mean, on the minor league fields, because you don't have any fans. And, you know, on the big league fields, you have at least, what, four to five to 6,000 fans. And it's a little bit easier because you can still feed off of them. Even when you're on the road, everybody from all different parts of the United States come to Arizona, come to Florida, and they watch their home teams. And they even travel well on the road. Arizona, like I mentioned, it's so easy for, say, a Cubs fan that they're, they're in Mesa They'll go down to Scottsdale. They'll go down to Goodyear and watch the Cubs play. Uh, Florida's a little bit different. It's a little tougher for their, their city, the home city fans to travel on the road. Uh, but with no fans in the stands, it's like going to a backfield or a minor league field and try to get through a game. So it's going to be a long nine innings, but at least they're getting baseball back. What do you think about miking players during these games? You know, anything to pique the interest. And I think having – Having the games on TV, obviously the broadcast will be great. Anything to try to get some of the fans interested because not being able to go out to your home park, uh, whether it's Wrigley Field or even Yankee Stadium, not being able to go there to try to hear some of the interaction. There's going to have to be a lot of bleeps and maybe some delays because uh, <laughs> this is the season and, and not too many fans want to hear, especially little kids, what goes on in the dugout or even in the field when you make an error, strike out, or, or do whatever, get hit. When you're a pitcher, you don't want to hear too much of that. Truth is truth. <laughs> but, exactly. And I also want to ask you about 
the difference for pitchers getting ready for this kind of scenario? That's the toughest part because you remember on the WBC, they were always wondering when is the perfect time to play it. And it really isn't a perfect time. They tried before spring training or they do it before spring training. And there's always some significant injury to one key player to a team. And a lot of guys, I remember when Mr. Steinberg was still around, he never liked his players, uh, especially on the big league roster, going and playing, whether it's a Japan uh, tour or winter ball. He didn't like that because he felt, hey, I want you on the regular season. I don't need you doing extracurricular things with other teams and get hurt and I lose you. So going early, hitters, maybe their timing might be off, but for, but for pitchers, they had their five weeks of spring training, and next thing you know, they're starting up again. And that's going to be the toughest part. I think by expanding the roster, which I think they probably will for a significant part of the year, uh, you look at the way things are now, I mean, uh, three, four, five innings, and the starter's out of there, and you're going to your bullpen. So I think teams will know how to eliminate some of the possible injuries. But I can see maybe some major injuries happening because of starting, having a significant – amount of time off and then starting again there is no perfect plan but we'll continue no. to monitor for sure we all want baseball back but we all want everyone to be safe and well of course too before we move on we're gonna play how well do you know your teammates uh oh Sound here we go Jeff? here okay. we go yeah let's all do right. it all right crack research team they helped out a lot too with the process. <laughs> okay <laughs> number one okay your first save as a Yankee came in relief of this starter. Oh, uh, my first relief. I, I, you know, it's funny because they just had it. I would say Andy Pettit. Oh, yes. Oh, oh, made, there we go. Teammate number two. He was a teammate of yours on both the Yankees and the Rangers. And the Rangers. Wow. Five, four, three, wow. two. Clue number two, he was I once one home run shy of a 40-40 season. Was Soriano? Was it Soriano? Yes! Oh, okay. Bing, bing, bing. Good job. Yeah. Underrated, I know. right? Okay. In some I knew he was ways. with the Rangers. What's that? He underrated in some ways, right? His importance. Well, he was terrific. And I tell you what, he, as small as he was, I mean, he wasn't a very big player. I think he used the heaviest bat out of anybody on the team. I mean, he, it was amazing that, you know, you had, uh, you had some big, strong guys, Tino and Bernie. And, you know, he, he used the biggest bat and the, I think, the heaviest bat out of anybody. Okay, quickly. I think you're going to get this one. Ready? The former teammate's baseball reference page lists him as batting left, throwing left, kicking left. Throwing? <laughs> Is, is this a player that I was a teammate with? Yes. Throwing left, batting left. He was left. one for five against you with four strikeouts. He had a 2020 season in his final year. You're going to kick yourself when you hear who it is. Well, I know it isn't Jeter because he's never gotten a hit off of me. I know that. He was known so as the warrior. Oh, Paul O'Neill? Remember when he kicked the ball in? Oh, that's right. When he was with Cincinnati. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Yeah, a little backdoor story. Tell us a quick Paul O'Neill story. A, yeah. a quick Paul O'Neill story. We love those. You know, he is a, it's funny. He's the most intense player that I ever played with. And, and I think the only guy, if he would go 0 for 4, the only guy would ever make him laugh was Tim Raines. And Tim Raines would come into the locker room after he probably threw every kind of water cooler, every bat uh, possible. Uh, you know, Tim Raines would still make him laugh. But I remember that he was so intense and he was so fired up on the field that the umpires would never throw him out. Uh, he could say whatever he wanted to the umpires because they wanted to keep him in the game because the longer they kept him in the game and the more fired up and frustrated he got, the umpires enjoyed it. If they, they would give him, they would almost do him a favor by throwing him out. So they would never throw him out. They would keep him in the game just to watch his antics. Did you guys try to hide your chuckles a little bit through all this? A little bit. You know, he was, he was such a great player and, and such a consistent player, and he was such a great teammate. I mean, you love the intensity. I mean, you don't see that anymore nowadays. You don't see intense players doing what he used to do. I mean, we had a lot of those. Uh, but he, he thought, it's funny, you know, for me, I thought everything was a strike. And for him, when he hit, he thought everything was a ball. If he took it, it was a ball. So it wasn't a strike. But he was, uh, he was a great teammate. And, and like I said, nobody else, I, he, it was like if he had an 0 for 4 day, 
if he had to play because nobody would come near him except Tim Raines. Tim Raines is the only guy to make him laugh on a tough day. Love that stuff. Jeff, thank you. We could visit for hours, but we appreciate these minutes. Wonderful to see you. And again, all the best to you and your family. Until the next time, stay well. Yeah, thanks, guys. Thanks, Nancy.